Hello everyone, it's Seth, probably better known as Zephron Olive, and it's time for another edition of Budget Magic. So this week, we're heading to Modern to play a deck that I am super excited about. This deck is really unique, it's super fun, and it's fairly competitive. I'm calling this one Monumental Quest, combining the power of Oketra's Monument and Quest for the Holy Relic to do some really sweet things. As you can see, only 72 bucks in the paper world. Definitely not bad for modern. 20 ticks on Magic Online. So a pretty great price for a deck that I'm just in love with. It's just a blast to play. A quick reminder before we break down Monumental Quest for Modern. If you enjoy this deck and you enjoy Budget Magic in general, it would be spectacular of you. If you could take a quick second, click that subscribe button down at the bottom of your screen. It's a great way to support the channel and the site for free. So let's talk Monumental Quest and kind of the genesis of of this deck. The inspiration of this deck was a deck we played on Much of Brew About Nothing a few weeks ago. So if you remember, we played a blue-white monument deck in Modern, and the deck itself, eh, kind of mediocre, wasn't really quite there. But the one big takeaway that I had from that deck was that Oketra's Monument has a lot of potential. So three mana legendary artifact makes our white creatures cheaper, which is super important to our deck, and then lets us go wide with one one white warrior tokens because we get one for free whenever we cast a creature. So Oketra's Monument the other thing that's worth noting about it is most Monument decks are awesome when you have Monument, but kinda not so awesome when you don't have Monument. That's one of the big challenges with the Ketra's Monument, is being able to do things when you don't have a Monument. So one solution for this problem is just to play more Monument. So when I started building around Oketra's Monument, I was digging around for additional Oketra's Monuments, and I finally remembered an old Zendikar card, Quest for the Holy Relic, which obviously isn't exactly the same as Oketra's Monument, but it kind of rewards the same thing. If you think about Oketra's Monument, all it wants you to do is play it and then play a bunch of creatures so you can make a bunch of tokens. Quest for the Holy Relic is exactly the same. It wants you to play it, play a bunch of creatures, get the five quest counters, and you can sacrifice it, tutor up any equipment, and even equip it directly to a creature. So with Oketra's Monument and Quest for the Holy Relic, we have eight payoffs for playing a bunch of cheap white creatures, which means we're much more likely to have one in our hand to start the game than if we just had Oketra's Monument. They also kind of loosely synergize together. If we play quests and we play a Ketra's Monument, it makes our creatures cheaper, easier to play them and trigger quests. But really, they kind of give us two separate paths. So while both reward playing a lot of creatures, and that's what our deck is based around, they kind of win us the game in two different ways. So the Ketra's Monument plan involves playing a lot of creatures, and we'll talk about what those creatures are in a minute, but playing a lot of creatures, and then we pump up those creatures and the tokens those creatures make with Honor of the Pure and Signal Pass. So a little bit of non bows there, Signal Pass on a white creature for a Ketra's Monument or for Honor of the Pure, but it's still a cheap creature to trigger our quest, to trigger our Ketra's Monument, and good at pumping up our team. And Honor of the Pure is just crazy with the tokens. If we have an Honor of the Pure out, it's so easy for us to just make 10 power out of nowhere with a Ketra's Monument and win the game really quickly. So this is kind of... I'm not even going to say plan A, because it just depends on what of our payoffs we draw. If we have a Catcher's Monument, this is going to be our plan most likely. If we have Quest for the Holy Relic, we go another direction. But this is one of our plans, to just play the Monument, go super wide, make the token super big, and kill our opponent with a huge swarm of warrior tokens. The Quest for the Holy Relic plan is a bit different. Instead of going wide, it lets us go tall. So we only have a single equipment, two copies of Argentum Armor. Thankfully, Argentum Armor is super awesome awesome. Not only does it make our creature huge, plus six, plus six, but whenever that creature attacks, it vindicates. And it doesn't say non-land permanent, so we can destroy anything. And one of the sweet things about having both of these is the go wide plan is very good against some decks. If our opponent's playing a creature, fair deck, Jund, Abzan, something like that, they're going to have a really hard time beating just a board full of tokens. On the other hand, if our opponent's playing Eldrazi Tron or something, having the ability to just get a quick Argentum Armor, maybe on turn four, attack, start nuking lands, is a super huge deal and lets us disrupt our opponent enough that we don't just lose to their Ugin or something, which would destroy our go-wide plan. So while the plans are definitely very different, 
they do help shore up some of the weaknesses of the other plan. Quest lets us beat the unfair decks, or gives us a chance against the unfair decks because of Argentum armor, while having Okedra's Monument lets us beat the fair decks, which are very good against Argentum armor because they can just lightning bolt the creature we're trying to equip it to for free in response. So they kind of even each other out and support each other in a really weird way. So those are our two plans. Go wide with Okedra's Monument, pump the tokens, win, or go tall with Argentum armor from our Crest of the Holy Relic, blow up our opponent's lands and win. How do we make this happen? And here, the most important card is White Mane Lion. White Mane Lion is super weird because we don't really use it like a creature. We mostly use it as a combo piece. So two mana, two, two, flash. Really nice we can use it on the end of our opponent's turn or play around counters. But when it enters the battlefield, we have to return a creature we control to our hand. So what this usually means is we just have our Akedra's Monument out. Let's say we have five mana. We go to the end of our opponent's turn. We just play White Mane Lion five times. Bouncing it to its own ability makes us five tokens that are one ones, or if we have an Honor of the Pure, they're two twos, and just lets us close out the game super quick. It's also one of our best ways of triggering our quest for the Holy Relic early. We can just play it, bounce it, play it, bounce it, get those quest counters, and eventually beat down. We can also use it to pick up other creatures, but most of the time with White Mane Lion, we're just using it to bounce itself, make tokens, get quest triggers, and use it as a combo piece like that. Our backup white main lions are Aviary Mechanic and Core Skyfisher. So the difference with these is Aviary Mechanic doesn't allow us to blink itself, so it's mostly good when we're playing it, picking up a signal pest, replaying the signal pest, something like that, or a Thraben Inspector. We can also use it if we don't have a land drop to pick up the land, but it's another way we can kind of keep triggering our quests, triggering our Oketra's Monument to go wide. And then Core Skyfisher is great, except it says we have to bounce a permanent. And while we often want to bounce a permanent, sometimes we just want to run out a two drop on turn two and don't want to pick up one of our lands. So that's kind of the downside with Core Skyfisher is we do have to bounce something whether we like it or not. We can also do some sweet tricks where they bounce each other, so we run out our aviary mechanic then we play skyfisher pick up aviary mechanic or block with an aviary mechanic and bounce it with our white main lion before combat damage to fizzle some damage and play it again and just keep looping these creatures in really crazy advantage generating ways to fizzle attacks and to fizzle removal spells and hopefully if we have a quest out or an akedra's monument also helping us win the game the other key part of the deck is our card advantage creatures. So we have Thraben Inspector, which just works insanely well with our bounce creatures. So we play Thraben Inspector on turn one. Turn two, we can play our Aviary Mechanic, pick up Thraben Inspector. Then on turn three, we can play Thraben Inspector, play a Core Skyfisher, pick up Thraben Inspector. So we get a whole bunch of clues. So we have this weird, sneaky card advantage that you wouldn't expect from a mono white deck with a ton of one drop. So it helps us to dig through our deck, find our important pieces, not just scoop to control decks and wrath. Sky is our, we can't actually cast it. We have zero blue mana in our deck, so it just sits in our hand, takes advantage of all the tokens and cheap creatures we play by tapping them to draw more cards, so it kind of becomes a personal howling mind with the tokens that we make. We can also do some sweet tricks where we like flash in our white main lion. Even though we have to bounce it back to our hand, we can tap it first to Sky is our if we're really desperate to draw a card, so worth keeping that in mind. The last non-land main deck card, just four Path Exiles, this is where most of our budget's going, but it's really important for the deck. The down step or the downgrade to go from Path to Condemn or Declaration in Stone or Journey to Nowhere is just incredibly massive, especially in this deck, which we want to be mana efficient. We want to use all our mana to keep playing the white main lines again and again to generate value and tokens so having path is really key to this deck being successful as far as the mana base super simple just 21 planes no tricks going on here in the sideboard we have selfless spirit and brave the elements which help protect our creatures primarily from wrath selfless spirit fizzles essentially any wrath in the format and brave the elements really good against pyroclasms anger of the gods also if we're in a board stall type matchup we can use brave the elements to just give our team protection 
from our opponent's blockers for a turn, swing in and win the game that way. Gust Dawn is for control matchups. Gives us a way we can wrath away some Eldrazi, Thought Not Seers, and so forth, so it can be good there, but it's mostly for grindy control matchups where it lets us get back all of our creatures that die to a supreme verdict, or just die in combat to lightning bolts and all that kind of stuff. Relic of Progenitus for graveyard decks. Disenchant, just kind of a general artifact and enchantment hate card. Not for anything super specific. And then Blessed Alliance can gain us a bit of life, can deal with a Death Shadow or some attacking creature, so it just does a little bit of everything. And that's Monumental Quest for Modern, and that's our Budget Magic deck for this week. So, I think this deck is super awesome. I think it is more competitive than it looks on paper, can actually have some decent success with it, and it just plays in a really unique way. The bouncing all the stuff back to your hand, you're getting this really weird value. Argentum Armor off of Quest for the Holy Relic is super sweet, although you gotta be careful and kinda pick your window so you don't get blown out by a removal spell, and just going wide with a Ketra's Monument, it's really easy to just close out the game on like turn 5 by playing White Main Line a bunch of times, making a huge board full of tokens, and suddenly we go from pretty much nothing going on. Maybe we have Thraben Inspector on the battlefield, along with the Honor of the Pure and a Catcher's Monument. Doesn't seem too scary. And then at the end of our opponent's turn, we suddenly have 12 power, 10 power on the battlefield, and just take over the game out of nowhere at instant speed. So it's really sweet and explosive when we have our monument or request for the Holy Relic, and having both of those means we have them way more often than if we had just one of them. So I think it's super fun. It's super unique. I'm going to stop rambling. Let's get to the video so you can see how it plays. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoy the gameplay videos, and I will talk to you soon. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoyed it, take a second and click that like button down below. It's a great way to help support the channel for free. And you can find the next video in the playlist right here.